Welcome to the series of how they made this render. Today we are going to analyze that project made by Eleven, a young visualization studio based in London that focuses mainly on architecture, interior design and furniture. To create these images, they mainly used 3ds Max and Corona Render. Before I start with the analysis, I want to announce that I have created an interview type form to analyze together with you your projects and publish them on the channel. To participate, I think the best way is to tag me or mention me in your projects on Instagram. That way I can see them, and the ones I choose, I can contact you and send you the form. I think it's a good way to learn from you, and at the same time show your projects. This design proposal was for a competition for a hotel and winery in the Douro Valley, located in Portugal. The design is inspired by the local landscape with a clean and geometric architecture of early modernism, with overlapping concrete volumes that seem to mimic the shapes of sloping vineyards. For the composition, considering the Portuguese nature of the project, they found some of Fernando Guerra's photos inspiring for this project. For the interior design and accessories, as the client did not specify them, they decided to use some furniture brands whose design they liked. You can do all the research and preparation and design from home, but nothing can open your creative mind better than experiencing the space in person. To recreate the mountainside in the design for the model's terrain, they used a combination of Google Earth plus Reality Capture, or you can also use the Google Maps plugin in SketchUp. To track the camera movement, they used PFTrack. I leave you a link to a tutorial on this as I find it interesting. Basically it is. From a real recording, track it and add a model in the design to this recording. They also did photogrammetry and scanned an olive tree. The scanning of outdoor photographs is probably the first step that will explore this technique, since a camera can be used to scan a the only equipment needed. When photographing for scans, you have to be very aware of light, especially sunlight, which provides uneven illumination around objects and casts harsh shadows. Since they were in England, they were served by cloudy, shady weather. It may seem easy at first glance, but there are a few things to keep in mind when we are outdoors. The priority is to maintain the same light conditions in all photos from all angles. You can imagine that being fast and having a steady hand is crucial, but it also helps to set the camera in manual mode, which allows to keep the same exposure and a small aperture size to avoid as much depth of field as possible. They did some photo shoots with the camera closer to the subject. That directly affects the quality and level of detail that can be seen later in the mesh. The closer to the object, the better the result. For the alignment work they use Reality Capture, which is one of the most efficient software for scanning objects. After loading the images into the software with the inspect tool, they would all be aligned and inspected. Helps identify how good the photo overlay is, and if any part of the object is missing. They also scanned the sheet out of curiosity to see how well Reality Capture performed in handling the thickness and translucency of a thin sheet. Most of the problems were caused by the natural specularity of the sheet, which caused some reflections to appear, and translated into holes in the mesh. They set up a makeshift set like the one shown in the image. Unlike the tree photo scanning workflow where the original mesh is kept, in this case the mesh is re-topologized, so they approached this object slightly differently. Since the reality capture mesh had some holes in it, they imported it into ZBrush where they finished modeling. Usually they used UV Master to generate UV coordinates, however, as the mesh was too complicated, they imported it back into Reality Capture where they reprojected the texture and generated the UVs. The texture is now ready to be taken into Photoshop and cleaned up. These were some of the other objects they scanned. For the vegetation animation, they used the GrowFX plugin for STC Max. Since modeling plants in HD from scratch is a lengthy process, they used Max Strip models of similar properties as a base and modified it to fit their needs. To create the branches and leaves of the olive tree, to match the trunk scanned from the photo, they used an oak model and shaped it to the desired shape. The trunk was hidden, the position of the branches and the width were adjusted to match the photo scan base, and the leaves were changed. To create nurseries, a similar process was used, but the assets are from mega scans. They were used as a base and for the leaf materials. Once the fixed model was finished, they used a mesh wind modifier to add movement. Here are some options to keep in mind when making looped models. The number of frames in the loop should be decided at the beginning and copied into the wind modifier for each level. 
the win must be correct. Make sure that the live update and animation are checked when exporting to a proxy. Note that having several trees moving the same at the same time will not look very convincing. Changing the playback offset may be a solution. A similar process was used to animate the scarf as for the curtains. This one was animated with marvelous designers. A basic model of the scarf was made using the pattern view. A simulation was enabled and a scarf was wrapped around the imported avatar. The wind was enabled, the speed was determined and the attenuation was enabled. The animation was recorded using the animation panel. The model is exported as OBJ and the motion as point cache 2. The OBJ is imported to 3 smacks and point cache is added as a modifier. The page turning animation of the magazine was also done with marvelous designers even though this program is designed for cloth simulation. We tried to recreate the same effect we see in the reference. The main steps were to import the magazine as the main model and the page as a pledge. Use the pin tool to freeze the page in contact with the book. Turned on wind, determined the speed and turned on attenuation. Adjusted the physical and simulation pressure properties to give the page a less textile look. Animation is recorded using the animation panel. The model is exported as OBJ and the motion as point cache 2. The OBJ is imported into CS Max and added to point cache as a modifier. They looked for scanned materials in between that can be found on the internet. For their textures they used these download pages. Real displacement textures, friendly shade, pixel mega scans, polygon, textures.com and for incredible details they opted for textures sublime. For the architecture of the building they needed tamped concrete and they couldn't find it anywhere online. They were thinking of scanning the concrete of a Peter Sunter building. For this they would have used the program Substance Designer and, and however, they settled for creating something using Quixel Mixer, an easy to use software that creates layered material like Photoshop. For post-production they used some plugins that can help. To get rid of render noise, they used neat videos, The Noiser. Real Smart Motion Blur from RE Vision FX is a small plugin for After Effects, which analyzes motion and adds a subtle motion blur effect to frames. They used RE Vision FX to slow down the speed of the video. For color correction, they used Magic Bullet from Red Giant. Very easy and fun to use. We leave you with the final images, but first, if you found the video interesting, Please like and subscribe to analyze more projects.